The Legend of Zelda franchise has always been one of the crown jewels in gaming. One can argue that almost every entry in the series is practically a classic at this point. So you might ask yourself, just how does one rank these games without going utterly insane? With lots of time, a bit of necessary arguing, and a little help from the internet. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we'd like you to join us as we take a look at our list of the best Legend of Zelda games. We'll be ranking these from the weakest links to the best links. Now make sure to equip your Zora armor because we're about to dive right in. It'll probably come as no surprise to you that Triforce Heroes rolls in at last place. That's not to say it's a bad game, it just falls short when compared to the other entries in this list. While this game can be played entirely single player, it shines when played with friends. You work your way through dungeons as Red, Blue, and Green Link, fighting bosses, solving puzzles, and gathering treasures that can be traded in to unlock new outfits. Each of which grant the user different weapons and abilities, but the grind to unlock some of them is just too much of a chore. Another new feature is the totem mechanic, which allows you to stack up to three links on top of each other to fight enemies and solve puzzles. In the end, it just ends up creating more headache and confusion when trying to coordinate with other players. Adventure of Link tries its best to change up the formula created by the original by implementing elements from other Nintendo franchises of its time. The Metroid and Mario-like 2D visuals not only give new life to the characters and enemies, but also allow for a richer combat system versus the simple hack and slash gameplay of the original. But why fix what isn't broken? In exchange for more tactical gameplay, it lost the series' sense of adventure, which is the real definition of what makes a Zelda game. Also, do you really want to talk about those tacked on RPG elements? The fact that the game that started it all finds itself so low on our list speaks to the quality of the rest of the titles. On the surface, you'll find a world full of dangerous dungeons that are begging to be explored. It was unique for its time, but as you play today, you'll find a game that just hasn't aged very well. Plus, it's nearly next impossible to finish these days without some sort of walkthrough. It's almost as if the game is warning you from the start, it's dangerous to go alone. Take one of these! Oracle of Ages and Seasons launched around the time of the Pokemon Dual Release craze, when every developer was trying to make an extra buck by releasing multiple, slightly tweaked versions of their game. This however wasn't necessarily the case this time, as both brought completely separate but connected adventures to the table while staying true to the classic Zelda formula. Seasons' main mechanic involves a tool known as the Rod of Seasons, which allows you to change the climate of the overworld to help with traversing areas and solving puzzles. Now if you have to pick one game from the Oracle series to play, we'd recommend going with Ages. Oracle of Ages equips Link with the Harp of Ages, a musical instrument that becomes the bridge between the past and present, which was nothing new to the series. Also worth mentioning are the new animal pals Link meets throughout both games like Rocky the Boxing Kangaroo, Moosh the Flying Blue Bear, and Dimitri the Swimming Dodongo. Yup, a Swimming Dodongo. And for Game Boy games, both Ages and Seasons have fairly in-depth storylines. Heck, the only way to see the game's true ending is by sharing a passcode between the two. Fans had been begging Nintendo for a more realistic Zelda game for years, and coming off the heels of The Wind Waker with its cartoonish graphics, Twilight Princess looked more than ready to fill those iron boots. The idea sounds intriguing on paper, but the segments when playing as Wolf Link quickly become repetitive with his limited moveset. The motion controls also felt pretty tacked on too, which you could avoid entirely by playing on either the GameCube or Wii U. On a positive note, its darker tone, engaging narrative, and deep characters allow for it to stand aside from its predecessors, and is definitely worth the time of any Zelda fan. Plus, we have Twilight Princess to thank for giving us one of the best companions in any Zelda game. Four Swords Adventures is a multiplayer-focused title for the Nintendo GameCube that's graphically reminiscent of A Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. It spins off the concepts introduced in Four Swords for Game Boy Advance, but its claim to fame, which some of you may argue, was the brilliant idea of utilizing Game Boy Advance systems as controllers. When playing, players will all typically look to the main screen, but when your character enters a cave, home, gameplay will then be visible on your respective GBA screen. This allows for players to run off and do their own thing without necessarily holding up the rest of the team. You honestly haven't lived until you've tried playing Four Swords Adventures 4 player, but all with your own separate TV screens. All you need to make that happen are 5 TVs, 5 GameCubes, 5 Game Boy players, 4 Game Boy Advances. Phantom Hourglass is a direct continuation of The Wind Waker. It was Link's first foray into the land of the DS, and man did it take advantage of everything the system had to offer. By utilizing the touchscreen, we were given full control of Link, tighter boomerang and arrow combat, the ability to write down quick notes on your map, and so much more. There are even a few boss battles that stretched across both screens, and let me tell you, that extra real estate made the fights all the more epic. Spirit Tracks takes everything Phantom Hourglass did right and expands upon it greatly. Its biggest difference is that it trades high seas sailing for some on the rails engineering. Spear Tracks features some of the strangest and toughest puzzles featured in any Zelda game, but you don't have to solve them alone as you're paired up with a phantom companion. 
Zelda! That definitely knows how to pull its own weight. The game also makes use of the Nintendo DS's built-in microphone for a few puzzles, boss battles, and for playing the game's musical instrument, the Spirit Flute. That's the Spirit Pipes to you in the UK. Regardless of how you sit on the locomotion focus, the heartfelt story and strong gameplay will definitely suck you in. Once again borrowing from the world of Four Swords, the evil wizard Vadi has been unleashed and is wreaking havoc on the land of Hyrule. Link and his new talking hat Ezlo must enlist the help of the Minish to restore a legendary blade to its former glory to bring down Vadi. While our new companion Ezlo may get a tad annoying, what Zelda companion doesn't, he provides Link the ability to shrink in size, which brings a whole new perspective the series has yet to see. This isn't the lengthiest story we've seen in a Zelda game either, but the addition of collecting kinstones and figurines is sure to keep you playing well after you finish the main quest. Being developed by the team who brought us the Oracle games, Flagship, means we were left in good hands. The Minish Cap tries a few new things, but stays relatively close to home and makes for another fine addition to the franchise. Now before we continue, we'd like to state that this is where the list started to get really tricky for us. All of these games are groundbreaking classics in their own regard that definitely deserve your attention. This is just where we sat on them. Now with that out of the way, let's continue. The Wind Waker was Link's first outing exclusively developed for the Nintendo GameCube, but was also a first for a number of other things. It changed up so much of what we knew from previous entries by including a cel-shaded aesthetic, which fans loathed upon release but also replace the vast lands of Hyrule with a wide open sea to explore. With help from a talking boat, the King of Red Lions, Link was able to freely cross each and every inch of the sea. You'd also take control of the direction and speed of the wind with the power of a magical baton known as the Wind Waker, turning you once again into a conductor of sorts. With these tools, you could spend hours searching the sea for buried treasure and islands that held even more secrets. It was a truly open world, and at its core it still remained a classic Zelda game that is a must play for any fan of the series. Unlike Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword gives us one-to-one -one motion control of Link's sword and other equipment thanks to the technology tucked into the Wii Motion Plus. Not only did it take us one step closer to feeling truly in tune with our hero, it changed the way we fought familiar enemies from the series. Guarding and taking a precisely angled swing at an enemy would net higher results than just chopping away blindly. Also new to the series is the ability to soar the skies thanks to the help of our new feathered loftwing friend. Jumping out into the world hoping your loftwing catches you is a thrilling yet wondrous feeling. Skyward Sword offers some of the most memorable and simplest boss fights in the series, especially the epic finale. Plus, Skyward Sword sets the stage as it serves as the first game in the official Zelda timeline. The fact that Nintendo managed to cram Link's Awakening, a full-fledged Zelda title, onto an original Game Boy cartridge still to this day astounds us. Washed ashore on a mysterious island, our amnesiac hero must fight through a number of dungeons to collect instruments to play for and wake the legendary Windfish. This entry introduced us to a host of new mechanics that eventually become mainstays in the series, including fishing, mini-bosses, and item trading sequences. Link's Awakening is a shining example of everything the Game Boy was capable of and easily stands the test of time. Part of me would love to someday see a remake on 3DS or Switch, but honestly, does it really need one? If gaming had a Criterion Collection, Majora's Mask would be a perfect addition to it. It's such a strange game that makes us wonder what was going on inside the minds of the developers back then. After all, this is a main series Nintendo title. From the timer trickling down, reminding you of the impending doom of a crash landing moon, to the transformation masks that allow Link to take on forms of Dekus, Gorons, and Zora people, Nintendo made a lot of interesting decisions this time around. There are also less dungeons to explore than traditionally found in the Zelda series, but a few side quests are so extensive that they easily make up for it. While its eerie aesthetic may give you the occasional chills, the bond Link develops with Termina and its inhabitants is something special that is yet to be replicated in any other entry. Majora's Mask definitely deserves all the attention it gets, and the high rank it's earned on our list. If you haven't played A Link Between Worlds yourself, you may be shocked to hear it rank so highly. But trust us, taking place in the world of A Link to the Past alone sets itself up for greatness, and it nails the execution oh so perfectly. A Link Between Worlds brought back the top-down perspective that longtime fans of the series were familiar with, but new was the ability for Link to transform into a painting, allowing him to then merge with nearby walls for a traversal to previously inaccessible areas. Also new was the unique decision to allow renting weapons and equipment from a shop versus earning them from dungeons like in previous titles. This also allowed you the freedom to tackle dungeons in any order you wanted. Much like Link's Awakening, A Link Between Worlds is easily one of the best games you can play on a handheld. From its gorgeous 60 frames per second graphics to its wide array of new items, it was lovingly crafted for longtime fans and newcomers alike. Where do we begin? 
A Link to the Past was the only Zelda title released on the Super Nintendo, which brought back the top-down gameplay of the original while rejecting almost every new idea Adventure of Link brought to the table. The jump to 16 bits breathed new life into the series, giving us new items to help with undertaking dungeons and the overworld like the Hookshot, Pegasus Boots, and even introduced us to the Master Sword. This was also the first time we'd see heart containers too. A Link to the Past was also the first in the series to introduce the idea of parallel worlds, the light and dark worlds, which we'd similarly see again in later games. Changing something in one world to see its effect in another would also come into play in other titles like Majora's Mask and the Oracle series. A Link to the Past not only paved the way for the adventure game genre, but also perfected the top-down Zelda formula the later games in this series would come to follow. Just like the next few on our list, it introduced and inspired an entire generation that we can't thank Nintendo enough for. What defines a classic? Is it something that is seen as timeless, something that was a first of its kind, or something from a different era? Regardless of how you see it, I think we can all agree that Ocarina of Time is, and forever will be, a classic. Similarly to A Link to the Past, in its own way, Ocarina of Time served as the guideline for a 3D Zelda adventure. For the first time, we were given a fully 3D open world adventure with an all new third person perspective, a groundbreaking for its time targeting system that is still used today, time travel, horseback riding, and a fully playable in-game musical instrument that not only let us fast travel around the map, but also made our trusty steed a little less relevant in the late game. We still love you, Opona. It's crazy just how hard Nintendo hit it out of the park with the series' first 3D outing. And Ocarina of Time would still be at the top of our list too, if it wasn't for another game that blew the doors wide open and gave us a breath of fresh air. Ever since Breath of the Wild launched alongside the Switch last year, there was no doubt that it would take the crown as the most outstanding addition to the Zelda franchise. And for good reason too. Breath of the Wild changed so much of what we come to expect from a Zelda game, while still staying faithful to everything it learned over the past 30 some years. The introduction of a realistic physics system allows for puzzles and challenges to be tackled from a number of different angles. Weapons breaking over time pushes you to try different weapons and fighting styles that you might overlook otherwise. You can cook and craft a number of items to help keep Link safe on his journey. Equipment holds unique stats. Your shield now doubles as a surfboard and Link has finally been granted the ability to jump and climb just about anything, which means that no territory should be left unexplored. We honestly could go on and on. It's just almost as if the game were developed in an entirely alternate reality. Who would have ever thought the day would come where Link would give up his green apparel? Breath of the Wild's version of Hyrule is one full of infinite possibilities that stays true to the vision of the classic. It's a playground for gamers young and old, and is without doubt the finest entry in the Legend of Zelda franchise. At least for now. There you have it, our list of the best Legend of Zelda games. Just like any list, our opinions probably differed a little from yours, so where did your favorites land, and what would your list look like? Feel free to let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to tap that like button and subscribe to Nintendo Life for more Nintendo related content. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Zeon from Nintendo Life, until next time.